But a question: yeah. What's the what, what would be the price range or or the starting price for a property that you want to tokenize uh, for it to make sense? You know, usually it's in you know above three million. But uh, what we want to try right now is you know with smaller properties, uh, and we want to target properties under five million. And to use the, the current crowdfunding regulation, that uh, the, the current amendment that is basically allowing uh, retail investors to participate under uh, regulation CF up to five million dollars, uh, you know, offerings up to five million dollars. So uh, we wanna we wanna actually emphasize on, on that as well. So we're gonna reduce the minimum investment to hundred dollars. All right, guys, welcome again to another amazing episode. Today we have Victor Voktora. Uh, so Victor is going to be on this podcast for a specific topic, uh, tokenization of real estate. Uh, so Victor is a serial entrepreneur with over 12 years of experience. He has led a sporting goods e-commerce website, scaled it to seven countries, 120 employees, 30 million in revenue. Then he discovered blockchain technology, and went into this whole new venture. And now he's the CEO of uh, Rhino, a uh, commercial real estate tokenization and lending company uh, with the focus on providing liquidity. Uh, so he is a, a leader in that in, a industry leader in the to tokenization efforts. Um, and this is a, a big financial transformation. I would say one of the biggest financial transformations of, of our last lifetime as we move into digital um, digital currency, right? Uh, blockchain. Uh, I personally, I own Litecoin, so I understand cryptocurrency. But I, what I don't understand is the, you know, the tokenization of real estate, right? So we're gonna dive into those things, and and you know, Victor's an expert, so he he's gonna show us and make us understand it a lot better. But before we do that, uh, Victor, if you can, can you give us a little bit about your background and and kind of you know what you discovered blockchain and up to that point uh because you did a lot tell us a little bit about what that aha moment uh was in your head for this new venture for for rhino and, and correct me if i said the company wrong yeah no, it's, it's reno like reno. real estate innovation yeah gotcha. um uh so yeah it's it's a long story but i will try to you know uh, briefly tells you how how you know everything happened. Uh, basically, um, I've been on an international selection panel in London, and uh, for my commercial uh, for my e-commerce business, basically uh, for Endeavor. This is an entrepreneurial organization um, around the world. It's it's pretty interesting organization that I have joined at, at that time. Um, and on that international selection panel, I met quite interesting people uh, out there. One of them uh, was a VC that uh, basically uh, was one of the early uh, investors in Kraken. So he explained to me, you know, some more uh, information regarding blockchain and uh, you know the, the technology and the, the potential that it has so at, at that time i were quite focused on my e-commerce uh, you know expansion and so on but uh, you know I, I get interested just because um i i heard that um uh, i heard that previously from another vc that is uh, you know an investor in, in my e-commerce business and um, I, I said, you know, I need to check this out. You know, what is this technology that, you know, uh, the VCs are uh, basically interested in. And um, when I realized what is the potential of blockchain, you know, I decided to actually uh, resign as uh, CEO of my e-commerce business 
and uh, moved to the United States and started doing something in the blockchain space, basically. Uh, I wasn't quite sure. I, I had an idea for, for a product at that time. It was a completely different product. So I had designed the first ETF for cryptocurrencies. It's a sort of an index fund, automated index fund. Um, but why, why, why I was were here, uh, I was here, uh, basically, I met quite interesting people um, that shared with me a problem that, uh, you know, they're owning a lot of real estate, but it's quite illiquid. So I thought, you know, potential blockchain could solve this. And, you know, it wasn't like, you know, an instant pop up in my head. It was more like, you know, a continuous uh, sort of thing that uh, I, I got some information. I saw a problem. Then I start, uh, you know, I have started thinking about that. And uh, at some point, I just decided, you know, let's do that. I, I'm going to do that. So I switched uh, from cryptocurrencies to tokenization of real estate, figure out a couple of things that need to be done. Uh, and, and that was pretty much the story in a really brief kind of. Awesome, man. So, you're muted. Sorry, man. Let me let me let me start by this because I know there's uh, there's a lot of people, uh, especially here in the U.S. and I don't know how it is in Europe, but I'm I'm assuming and from what I hear, uh, cryptocurrency is more popular and more used in in Europe than in the states. Is that is that your uh, is is that accurate? Is that your take on that? I I can say. Uh, that in, in Europe, uh, basically, uh, cryptocurrencies are quite popular, but I mean, um, blockchain development, especially in Bulgaria, it's, it's much, much more popular. I mean, okay. uh, we have a lot of uh, Solidity developers and so on, but in terms of, you know, investing in cryptocurrencies, I think, you know, uh, Asia is, is the most, uh, you know, popular uh, one as well as uh, you know United States um, other than that in Europe uh, it's it's quite uh, well accepted I mean uh, the, this space is quite well accepted just because you know Europe is falling behind in terms of um, innovation in the financial world compared with United States so I guess, you know, uh, in Europe, most of the regulators are seeing the potential to basically compete overall with the United States because of that. Um, that that's my, my you know, uh, sort of observation on the market. Yeah, no, and that's very interesting because we've had, uh, we've been having uh, people from, from other countries that come from other countries and see different opportunities and they see, what we probably would say, I think I was how they box, but it's not that you're saying uh, you're, you're thinking of how they box. It's just you're bringing uh, your experience from another perspective and from, uh, from other parts of the world that, that we probably not seeing here. We're not accustomed to use. And you come and start using those technologies or do, those ideas and start implementing it on, on, on uh, into opportunities here in the state, so it's pretty interesting that you that you're bringing this up because a lot of people are gonna be like, okay, how you know they're, they're probably not accustomed to to do that, and it's, it's a pretty new subject for for a lot of us. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. So let, let me ask you your your whole process of tokenization because you said you know they they had a problem, right? They wanted to have you know real estate and, and blockchain. Blockchain solved an issue. What exactly does tokenization of real estate mean? Yeah, so tokenization of real estate means fractional ownership in real estate. Uh, in, in basically, that that is what it is. I mean, uh, you can own piece of uh, commercial property uh, without you know need to invest millions that, that's the idea so basically you can purchase uh hundred dollars worth of real estate that, that that's what the tokenization is is bringing i mean 
the tokenization is not the only way you can own fractional ownership, but it's a better way to do that. So, um, and, and why is better? It's just because the technology allows you to um, first to have a worldwide sort of presence. So you basically can sell your tokens uh, everywhere. Um, and the second thing is you can execute transaction without an intermediary. So basically I could sell my shares in a property to you without having an intermediary. So you are paying me, I'm transferring you the tokens. And that's, that's uh, you know, that's already done. You're, you have a completed transaction. Um, that's pretty much uh, why the tokenization is different. I mean, the tokenization is just piece of what we do need in order to have the complete solution ready. So uh, tokenization by itself, it's not enough to provide liquidity. So you need another pieces in place. Like, you know, we, we have developed a, a lending lending piece, which is providing leverage for um, token investors. Um, and we do have marketplace where you can sell those, you know, so you can meet buyers and sellers. And, and uh, later on, you need secondary market as well. That's the idea. So the idea of tokenization is to provide liquidity because traditionally the real estate market, especially commercial real estate market, is, is highly illiquid market. Um, and, and the reason obviously is that, you know, the transactions are quite significant like in millions. So a lot of people yeah. can't afford to participate in a, in a you know, a such, such a transaction. So that's why the tokenization is coming in place to allow more people to participate first, and then, you know, to have the ability to, to liquidate their investment at some point or to borrow money against their investment at some point. That's the, that's the goal. So let me, let me get this straight. So when you, when you say a token, are you talking about cryptocurrency or what kind of currency are you talking about? Yeah, when I'm talking about tokens, what the token represent is uh, one token is actually one share in a, in a company, in an LLC. Mm -hmm. So um, there is no other way right now to tokenize real estate than to uh, actually tokenize a company that is owning real estate. So uh, through Delaware new amendment, I mean, it's not new, they, they did it 2017, but um, uh, you basically can have a digital representation of share. So instead of having a paper certificate yes. uh, for your ownership, you're having digital certificate, which is in the form of token. That's what is that you know what the tokenization is. Gotcha. So uh, you have all the rights as a shareholder. You have you know. Uh, all the liabilities as well as a shareholder, but um, pretty much um, uh, you, you can basically vote for, you know, for that property, what, what should be done and so on. Uh, and you have the right to uh, get dividends. So, so this sounds like just like a, a commercial syndication um, where the limited partners have you know, a percentage ownership of the the asset. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with a syndication, but yeah. but in that piece, you know, obviously it's in a it's in a a fiat currency, right? Mm -hmm. When you say when you say that someone is able to buy a token in the digital side, right? Are they still using fiat currency? What kind of currency are, they, are you referring to? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about fiat currency, and it's, uh, you know that that's the way you're purchasing it. In reality, you're buying. Imagine you're buying stock in a, in real estate, pretty much. Yeah. So you're basically buying a security. Um, so you're, you're purchasing that with fiat. You can purchase it with crypto. You can purchase it with whatever you know payment methods is, is available on the different platforms or 
you can negotiate to, to purchase with whatever you want, you know, so you can exchange for a car or something. I mean, everything is possible. You're just owning an asset that you can decide how to deal with. Um, through our platform, we're allowing uh, fiat and cryptocurrency, you know, payments. Uh, but other than that, outside of what we do have, basically yeah. you can execute transaction in a way that serves you. So it doesn't matter. That's interesting. So then I, I guess, then what is the difference between doing a tokenization and just doing like an offering um, as far as saying, hey, you know, I, I can ACH. So I guess the key difference is that blockchain. So that blockchain process, how does that make it better than just saying, hey, I'm going to do an ACH to you, um, you know, right away to purchase 15% of your commercial asset, right? Yeah. So the difference is that if you purchase, you know, in the, the traditional way, you usually are gonna uh, stuck there for a while, you know. Uh, you are not basically able to sell your shares easily. Uh, that That's the main problem. So you don't have liquidity, you don't have secondary market, you are not able to transfer ownership easily to somebody in Asia or somebody, you know, in different continent um, without, you know, having a personal meeting or something like this. Uh, I mean, even if you, you're you able to do that, it, it's quite tough. So with blockchain and tokenization, you're basically able to transfer ownership quite easily, you know, to somebody. Uh, and then they can just transfer you the money and that's so. Or you can trade it on a secondary market. So you have liquidity, that, that's the idea of tokenization, to provide higher level of liquidity. Right now, you still can basically invest in crowdfunding, real estate crowdfunding platforms where you yeah. can invest, let's say, a thousand bucks or something like this. So this piece is pretty similar. But what they're lacking right now is a secondary market. So uh, with tokenization, you're able to, to have a secondary market. And our goal later on is to, to add additional services that's going to provide an instant ability to sell your tokens. So if you want to sell them, you're going to be able to do that. It's going to take some time. You know, I'm not going to go deeply into it because it's, it's quite complicated and still a concept that we are working internally uh, for. But uh, basically, we believe that at some point we're going to be able to, to provide an option for you when you purchase something like this to have 100% certainty that, you know, you can sell it. At any at any point, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be with uh, huge profit or something like this. But you're gonna have the ability to sell it right away. If you want, you know, to sell it at a higher price or something, you might look for, you know, somebody to do that. But uh, yeah, other than that, you you're gonna have the right to do that right away. That's that's really interesting because you're absolutely right. I mean, that's a, that is a major issue we see for investors is if they have an ownership stake. And if it usually that's when the issues arises, hey, I wanna I wanna get my money, you know, I, I I need it or something. Well, now they have the ability for that secondary market to say, okay, well, let me go sell it. And I mean, they won't make profit. I mean, that that would be kind of the understanding. You can take your money, but you won't make profit, or you may make profit. Who knows? But at the end of the day, you can get your money back. Um, so then, when you sell. Because uh, you're selling essentially your security, your tokenized security, over to someone else. Um, are you? What about the the ownership, the actual ownership of the asset, right? How if you wanted to change, you know, the the title and all that to a whole completely new buyer? How does that process work? Is it quicker? Is it slower? You don't need to to basically change uh, ownership uh, and, uh, you know, change, transfer the title to somebody else. You, you, you have an entity that is holding the, the title. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what you're just doing is you are selling your shares into that property. The process is instant. You, you are not 
you know, you don't need lawyers to participate in the transaction or something like this. So you're basically selling your shares and uh, the, the income that is coming with those shares is being transferred to somebody else. So they're paying you, they're start getting, you know, dividend. And they, and they now own that percentage of that entity. Yes, exactly. So it makes the transaction like that. Yes. That is really cool. I like that. <laughs> That's really cool. That's awesome. So how did, what, what advantages does this have with the in, internationally? Are you, are you, is this attracting more investors? Does this help with that? Yeah, of course. I mean, because of that, you're able to, to basically sell it everywhere. Uh, and, and it's pretty, pretty easy, you know, so you can, uh sell some um let's say you're investing in tokenized real estate at some point this tokenized real estate may might have uh open fares in exchanges all over the world so you can put some tokens here some tokens there for sale and looking for the best price uh so uh, you know at the same time you basically can trade the tokens in different locations which, which is awesome uh that's that's something that you can't do today with securities i mean you can list certain company in different you know exchanges all over the world but it's it's not as easy as like you know just moving tokens here and there <laughs> it, it's a listing process yeah that is taking a lot of time usually no, that, that's really, really awesome. So let me ask you about your company. How are you, what is the process to say, hey, hey, Victor, I have this, this asset that we, we purchase uh, and we want to see if we want to get it tokenized? Uh, the, the process is pretty straightforward. We are signing a contract, then uh, we are uh, basically creating all the documents that are required. Uh, those are pretty much as a standard fundraise uh, under regulation uh, D, 506 C. Um, we're preparing private postman memorandum. We're preparing, uh, you know, token purchase agreement and operating agreement for for that offering. Uh, of course, we need the, the documents first in order to do that. Um, we're doing light due diligence at the start. And uh, when, and we're creating new company, of course, uh, at least that is, we're creating new company, then we are preparing all the documents for, for the fundraise. And usually we are fundraising into this new entity. When the fundraise is finalized, we are purchasing the property from the, the previous owner. And uh, then, you know, the, the distribution starts among the token holders um this is the process it's pretty uh, quick it usually takes two weeks to be completed i mean uh, to complete the tokenization and list it on our marketplace um then it depends on the, the, the asset you know how long it's going to take to be uh to be completed in terms of fundraising mm, okay and your platform helps with the fundraising yeah right yeah. okay and then if you, do you need to have the asset already in closed or is it under contract? How, what, what, when is the right time? Uh, it, it could be under contract as well. So it could be done that way. We have a transaction that is done that way. Um, and preferably you need to be the owner but uh, you know, we can get creative. Gotcha. Love okay. It. Que a yeah. question: What's the what, what would be the price range or or the starting price for a property that you want to tokenize uh, for it to make sense? You know, usually it's in you know above three million. But uh, what we want to try right now is you know with smaller properties uh, and we want to target properties under 5 million 
and to use the, the current crowdfunding regulation that uh, the, the current amendment that is basically allowing uh, retail investors to participate under uh, regulation CF up to $5 million, uh, you know, for offerings up to $5 million. So uh, we want to we wanna actually emphasize on, on that as well. So we're going to reduce the minimum investment to $100 and uh, we're going to be able to onboard retail investors that way. We are preparing the setup for, for something like this as well. As, as right now, our platform is only for accredited investors, which doesn't actually uh, you know, solve the problem for smaller investors uh, that, that wants to participate. And we do have quite plenty of them that can't participate right now. So we need to, to actually do something. And, and that's, uh, you know, not, uh, not only our, uh, you know, uh, I vision, but also the regulators are envisioning uh, get that way. So they increased the, the minimum fundraise from a million to 5 million for regulation CF, as well as uh, from 50 million to 75 million for regulation A. Um, that's pretty helpful for the industry overall because, you know, for smaller projects, we're going to be able to, again, go after retail investors up to 5 million. And above that, we can register uh, offerings under Regulation A. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's tougher, you know, Regulation A is uh, basically a public company, almost uh, a light public company, sort of. So, um and we still have the option to do a reg D offering, which is unlimited in size, but it's only for great investors. Gotcha. So then just to clarify this, so you are, when you, when, when someone approaches you, the idea is that they have already this asset owned and essentially your company is purchasing that asset from the, from that person. You're not a, crowdfunding platform for other people, correct? No, we we first setting up a new company, tokenizing mm -hmm. it, fundraise, and then purchasing the property. Gotcha. We're not purchasing it right away. It, yeah, exactly. But you're not, for example, if I came to you with an asset, I can't put my asset on your platform to be tokenized it, it, it will have to be purchased from your company for your company to tokenize it, correct? Uh, basically, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the SPV that we are tokenizing has a contract with, with you as, as an owner that, you know, setting up some terms. Uh, and and uh, basically we are saying, you know, when we complete the, the fundraise, we're going to purchase your property at this price. That, that's all, you know. And we are doing the fundraise. That's what um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. then basically we are not the owner. The owner uh, is becoming the new investor that is basically purchasing the tokens, the shares the tokens. into that SPV. Exactly. We're just yeah. we're just an issuer. Yeah, right. tracking. And that's what I wanted to make sure that we were clear. So you essentially are, are purchasing whatever asset is brought to you for your portfolio to then be tokenized to your investors that buy the tokens of that asset. Um, and not not like a crowdfunding platform like Fundrise or CrowdStreet where I bring them an asset and they raise the capital for me, but I'm still the owner. That's yeah. the difference I wanted to say, right? Am I correct yeah. on that? Yeah, yeah. We, we mostly, of course we can work for fundraisers as well. We can work for fundraisers, it's just, you know, it's going to be different setup. It really depends on the setup. You know, uh, we can tokenize a development project, basically, uh, and, and we can have terms about that. So we're still going to fundraise under this new SPV. Uh, then, you know, the land is going to be transferred at some point uh, to this new SPV, or even it could be transferred right away. It just you know, matter of, uh, you know, uh, of setup. Um, and then you're fundraising, you have enough 
funding to to basically start developing uh, and work on that project. When it's completed, distribution starts and you have multiple investors on the cap table. Uh, that's that could be done as well. I mean, we can have multiple setups. What we are trying to specialize is, you know, um, we want to specialize in selling your building in tokenized way. Not, not that much on fundraising, but mostly on selling your building in a different way. So that, uh, that's, that's how um, we want to actually bring additional features like lending, um, because, uh, you know, imagine that you're an investor uh, and you have invested $100,000 in tokenized real estate and now you have another opportunity or you need cash for some reason. Uh, basically, you're just depositing your tokens into our system and we automatically calculating a repayment schedule for you. So, um, and, and we are providing you an offer instantly. I mean, it's absolutely instant. So basically you can borrow 70,000 right away. So next day you're going to have the money or even the same day yeah, if, if you take them in, in stable coins. Um, which, uh, which is, you know, a different ball game, you know, you're not providing any documents, you're not providing anything. So we as a company are different also because we're collecting a lot of data regarding the property. We are doing some, you know, some other, uh, you know, things prior to the, uh, not prior, but, you know, when, when the tokenization is completed, we're, we're doing, uh, uh, quite a lot of the diligence, deeper due diligence on the property. We're collecting a lot of data. And then later on, we are using this data for instant loss. When you do need that, you're able to do that right away. So um, another, another uh, good thing about you know, our lending solution is that uh, you can basically uh, borrow money and then go back and purchase more you know, real estate. It might be the same deal or it might be a different deal. And um, that, that's a pretty, pretty cool thing uh, because it's, provo it, it's providing a lot of liquidity in the marketplace. No, man, that, that is pretty, pretty awesome. I think you got a really good solution for, for making quick transactions and, and providing value to investors and, and not only that to, to operators. The way I see it is if, if you could, your company looks at a finalized, stabilized commercial asset. I mean, guys like us could sell it to your company and it'll be a quick transaction where you can tokenize it and, and buy it right up, up front. Um, sounds like a great way to, to do it and, and reach a massive potential investors. Um, and one thing I wanted to touch upon, because you mentioned you also are able to, to do that with cryptocurrency. And that's something I'm very curious about is buying a, a token with cryptocurrency. Because um, I know you're able to do it, but the value of cryptocurrency fluctuates so much um how do you how do you make that into a safe investment so there there are two ways to do that uh the first way is basically just to accept uh stable coins stable coins are backed by us dollars and you they're not fluctuating in theory <laughs> so far so they, they're you know equal to one US dollar. So that way you are accepting cryptocurrencies and you're still, you know, not having any volatility on the back end. Uh, one other way to do that is basically to uh, convert it immediately either to stablecoin or to fiat right away. So uh, those are the two options to do that. Um, so basically, the investors in, in tokenized real estate, they are bank in Bitcoin, let's say, but it's converted into the today exchange rate right away. So you're not having any, any more Bitcoin, you know, sitting on your, <laughs> on your balance, uh, so to say. And then uh, that's the only way to do that. 
So you, you're not holding, and we are not holding Bitcoins or Ethereum long term because it might go down, it might go up. You know, you, you never know. But if it goes down, what's going to happen? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that, that was my point. That's what I was. Why I was asking. But no, I, I really, really appreciate the the perspective and the insight into blockchain tokenization and how it all works. That's really interesting and look to hear more from you in the future. German, you have any other questions? No, no, no. I'm I'm very intrigued. I, I gotta dig more into it. Uh I, I didn't know this existed and it's pretty uh -huh. pretty cool, man. Um yeah, and I, I I would love to keep in touch with you uh and to see how, how you're doing and, and, and see more of your projects. So I appreciate your time, brother. Yeah, yeah. awesome man. And if you can, you know, go ahead and let the audience know where, where they can reach you and where they can find you. Uh, so they can find me, you know, on LinkedIn for sure, uh, personally, and, you know, they can find the, my company, reno.io, um, or, you know, uh, just browse online for tokenized real estate and, you know, you're going to see us. We are pretty much, uh, on a lot of places, there are a lot of news about us, so you can basically understand more about what what we have accomplished so far. Yeah, and and Victor's been a lot humble. They're they're a leader in their space, and I found them through a, a major uh, publication. So um, they're definitely getting a lot of traction. Uh, pay attention to them, doing big things in that space. So Victor, thanks so much, and. Uh, for all the listeners out there, give us a five-star review, show us some feedback. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys.